Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to the new podcast series by Akiran. So, in each episode, what we will be doing is uh, we will be taking a topic and uh, we would be discussing that, right? So, today's topic, what we thought is we will take one, which is like if you want to have an accelerated start, if you are using or new to Kamunda, how you can do that. So, that's the topic we are going to take and discuss. So let's get started, right? So let me introduce myself. I'm Rajkumar Malli, and uh, I have overall a 10 year experience uh, in the technology sector. Currently I handle all the pre-sales activities at Acuron. So I have been into the space of BPM, DAM, and so on. So along with me, I also have Alex. So Alex is our chief technical architect. Alex, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, thanks Raj. Hey, hi team. Uh, myself, Anthony Alex. So in Acheron, I lead the technical uh, innovations and I lead the architecture team as part of Acheron. So I have like 11 plus years of experience. So I started my career as a developer for BPM. So I started with like a, a BPM one technology and uh, I have been working with multiple different BPM solutions and uh, different dam solutions. Currently I'm working and leading the practice of Kamunda. So that is all about me. Back to you Raj. Got it. Probably, I think it's an interesting date what we chose to start this uh, series. Uh, it's 29th of February. Uh, being a leap year, right? I think uh, the extra date, whatever we got, I think we 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 are taking advantage, is what I would say. Uh, so probably hoping to see more such kind of webinars uh, going forward. So uh, I'll start with something simple, right? So Alex, uh, I know in your overall experience of 11 years, you have worked with a lot of PPM technologies, correct? Now, when it comes to Kamunda, what do you think that is something unique or something you love about it the most? It can be one or more than one, whatever you think so. Okay. So coming to Kamunda, right, mainly Kamunda 8, uh, when Kamunda introduced the ZB engine, uh, one thing which is quite important or interesting for me when I started looking into it is the microservice architecture actually. So seamless integration of microservices orchestration as part of Kamunda, where we can just bring in, uh, what is that? different microservices integration where we can integrate to different systems actually and it is also seamless integration where you can just scale up and down so that scalability is also another part right so where you can have the horizontal and vertical scaling actually where everything is possible with this engine with, with this new Kamunda version and uh, that is something which is interesting or that is something which is which just pulled me into Kamunda actually got it so maybe for the audience who are new it would be great I believe if you can talk more about the scaling Okay, see, uh, there are usually there is this horizontal and vertical scaling, right? So, uh, vertical is all about adding more resources actually. So, where we can just increase the system memory or system CPU actually. That is actually, it, it, it is helpful in few cases. Let's take a use case where you want to just, uh, what is it, process a very big data. In that case, you can go for a vertical scaling. But there is also an issue where there is a single point of failure, where you will have only one node and if it fails, your entire application goes dry. But when you are going for an horizontal scaling, you will be having like adding multiple nodes actually, where you will have been, you will be having like different microservices running in different nodes, and each one can actually scale vertically, uh, sorry, horizontally, where you can, let's say that if you are taking insurance use case and your dashboard is a very costly component, what you can do is you can just scale horizontally that particular component alone and have like different nodes handling the entire dashboard component of uh, the insurance case actually. Got it. All right, um, so apart from that, right, um, let's say I also remember that Kamunda can support different language if I'm not wrong, right? Uh, what do you think about that? See, Meaning uh, programming language, yes. right? <laughs> yeah, so as an architect, right, uh, one thing which is important for me is I don't want to put or I don't, I don't want to have a boundary for my developers where they wanted to work in a specific language or I'm right. like, okay, you just go and work in Java alone. They are like, if I want to work in AA, I need to work in Python. So this language agnostic, Kamunda is more of language agnostic where you can develop 
any of by using any of the languages, right? So we have this concept of job worker, where the job worker is something Kamunda provides SDK where we can build using any languages. And internally, we have also tried building with Java, uh, Python, and also Node.js. Got it. Got it. So, um, so for viewers, right? Uh, you might be wondering what Akiron does on Kamunda, right? So probably maybe I'll bring up a slide which which talks about that. So if you see what uh, what you see on the screen, right? Uh, I can say that. First of all, we provide consulting on Kamunda, right? So that's that's on your right hand side. So consulting, any problem you have which you want to solve with Kamunda, we are there. Yeah, it includes development, you want QA support, testing, managed services, all those things doesn't matter, right? We support all the 360 degree of services uh, as part of that. So then if you see on the leftmost side, what we also have is we also have a lot of point solution and accelerator framework, right? So I'll be covering this topic in deep when we discuss about uh, uh, the keys, what you can uh, use to accelerate your development Kamunda, right? We'll go in detail in that, but I'll just quickly highlight what are these. So imagine something like this. Um, um, let's say you wanted to uh, build an leave application system for your organization. And uh, you don't want what is coming with your HRMS system, you wanna have a custom one, and you wanna design the workflow uh, with Kamunda. Now, probably you wanted to have this entire approval process and all those things uh, as part of your existing HRMS system. You wanna replace the leave module alone. Right? So in those cases, what you would be doing is you will, you will most likely not use the default inbox, task list, and all those things which is provided by you, Kamunda. And you wanted to have your own custom UI and so on. Now, in, in traditional uh, approach, what you do is you write, either write uh, uh, UI in Angular or React or any other technologies, correct? But remember, you have to develop everything from scratch. Even if you want to say, I want to open and see what is the task detail, you have to write it from scratch. Correct. And uh, what if there is a library available for you and you are able to accelerate your development? So that's that's what we call this uh, enterprise work management framework. So it is a collection of set of libraries, UI component services, which you can easily uh, you can easily switch it, use it, and develop your application. Right, so that's 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 all is about enterprise uh, work management framework, right? So next, coming to the next item, right? So if you see, we also have point solutions for uh, media and uh, uh, claims management. So let's go one by one. Now, if you would have seen our profile, we are strong in media and media related workflows. Um, so what does it mean, right? Um, we have done work in this industry for more than uh, 10 plus years. And uh, we saw a lot of common problems across that, right? And we thought, hey, these are like something common which is happening across uh, a different organization. Why don't we build a point solution which solves all these things as a checklist, right? And if you just wanted to use three of them, you can pick and choose, right? So that's that's what this entire media workflow means. It has your UI components, libraries, services, and also it has process templates. So if you ask me what is a process template, uh, probably imagine like uh, someone has developed you the entire process for transcoding something, right, already, and all you have to do is take it up, change it according to your needs, right? And from there, you can uh, uh, easily go live. So those are templates, right? So it's a collection of all. Like similar to that, we also have for claims management on the, on the insurance domain. So these are our core stents, right, uh, in Kamunda. So apart from that, now if you see the center portion of what you see on the screen, we have a lot of connectors, right? And uh, this is some of them are already available in the marketplace of Kamunda. 
probably what I'll do is right, I'll ask Alex to talk about it because he has been, uh, he and his team has been the brains behind developing some of them, right? So Alex, why don't you uh, explain our audience uh, what we do on the connector space? Yeah, sure Raj. So when it is coming to connectors, right, uh, we develop connectors which is mainly specific for the problem, business problem, what we are trying to solve actually. So we have few connectors which is available as part of marketplace. Mm -hmm. Few connectors are more private, which is for a very specific or a point solution actually. So uh, we have three connectors which is available in the market space. So which are like a MongoDB connector. We have another connector for cloud spanner. And the third one is for the cloud storage actually, Google Cloud Storage. So this three, by, by using these three connectors, right, you can just have a jump start where if you want to connect to MongoDB or if you want to have your uh, NoSQL database in cloud, you can use this connector to store that particular data in the cloud actually. Right. And you have the storage where if you want to copy any files, where you want to have your files moved to your cloud, you can use the Google Cloud Storage Connector and that will take care of moving your files to the cloud actually. Understood. So meaning if my organization is looking for something like I want to store my files in uh, GCS, probably rather than I develop everything from scratch, yes. I can directly take this connector build my process and I'm good to go, right? Yes. So this this saves me time and I can have a jump start. Yes, so uh, what we have also done is, right, so what uh, beautiful about the Kamunda connectors is, you can take the connector what we have built mm -hmm. and if you wanted to uh, like present it or you wanted to create it as a specific connector for your organization, mm -hmm. that is also something which uh, we can do it with Kamunda actually. Nice. So we can just take our, our connector as a template and build a connector on top of it so that that makes sure that there are a few uh, parameters for that particular connector which is predefined by your organization actually. So that is also something which is possible with Kamunda. Awesome. Right. But, but going back to your statement, uh, you said that only three is available in the marketplace, but uh, there is six in the screen, right? So what about the rest? So the rest three are more specific to the point solution what we have right for the media workflow. So this, uh, what is it? These are more like enterprise connectors. Uh, what I would say. So these connectors are mainly to solve the problems which you face as part of your media workflow. Let's take a use case where uh, most of the video files, right, as part of the media workflow, you want to transcode it, where you want to create multiple versions or multiple uh, videos uh, by using transcoding actually. Okay. So. For, to, to solve that use case, right, we have built two connectors which is mainly for GCP and also for AWS Elemental actually, mm -hmm. where this connector mainly solves the purpose of you have your file in your uh, data center. Mm -hmm. So this will make sure to upload your file to the respective cloud. So if it is AWS Elemental, it will upload it to S3 and then it will transcode it to your, uh, what is that term? And the output format what you want. So let's check that you have a raw video file and you wanted to convert it into MP4. Uh, let's say that you want to, uh, what is that, um, share it for like YouTube or Facebook where they, they have this option of having different resolutions. You can also create different resolutions by using this connector actually. So that is mainly like for this point solution where we can utilize it for solving the media workflow uh, issues what we have. Got it. So what you're saying is, hey, three is available for me in the marketplace to go and use it. The other three are part of our a package solution or point solution, what you want to call it, and it, it available, it's available as part of the bundle. So if you want to use them and uh, use it for your development or have wanted to have a jump start, I think you can use this connector, deploy it in your org uh, or in the cloud and, and, and take it forward. Yes. So uh, we support both the versions of Kamunda, right? Kamunda SaaS and Kamunda self-managed. So the connectors, what we have published as part of marketplace supports both. And as part of the package, whatever the connectors we have, it also supports both actually. So if you want, you can also deploy the connectors as part of your local infrastructure, or you can just deploy it in the, uh, what is it, Kamunda SaaS platform actually. Perfect. So again, uh, probably what we'll do is, uh, we'll put the URLs for all these things uh, at end of the uh, uh, podcast. It, I'll, I'll ask Bharat, uh, who's our director here uh, for the session, to put it on the screen, right? Perfect. So, so Alex, uh, I also heard that your team is working on a new connector, right? Yeah. Uh, which is not in the list. What is that? So, 
uh, we in, as part of Acuron, right, we try to go find specific problem statements and build connector on top of it. And mm -hmm. at, at least from 2023, when they started this open AA, the talk is all about AA, right. AA where all clients want to use the AA as part of their projects, at least at, at, at some point, actually. Okay, so the, there, there is this very big hype about AA. And we can also see that the Kamunda has released a connector for open AA. Okay, okay. so what we targeted is, we see that many of the customers are using GCP. So we targeted for integrating the GCP's AA services, which is available. So we are building a connector, which is available, which will be available in the upcoming, in the next week, which will be integrating mainly to the Vertex AA and the Vision AA service, which is available as part of the uh, Google Cloud Raj. So what it does actually, what, what it actually does is, so one of the key is a generative AA, where uh, let's say that- So that's want, the Vertex, correct? Yes, that is the Vertex AA actually where you can actually use it for many use cases actually. So one use case, what I can say is the translation, right? Say if I want to translate a specific text to a different language, I can just use it. Or if I want to summarize a document, I can use it. Or if I want to gather some information, I can use that particular Vertex AI as it is more of a generative AI, what it provides actually. Got it, sounds interesting. but. How easy are these, right, for me to go and pick up and start developing? Uh, maybe, is it is it something you can show us now? Yeah, sure, Raj. Uh, let me share my screen, right? <clears throat> yeah, so what we have is the marketplace. So we have the connectors, what we have right. built, right? So all the connectors, what is available, it is there as part of the GitHub actually. The entire source code is also available so that anyone if they want, they can take it and customize it on top of it actually. So let me go to my GitHub where uh, all of the connectors are available, right? So let me take a use case of this Google EA connector. Mm -hmm. So as part of this connector, we just package the source code and also we can we, we are packaging something called as the element template. Mm -hmm. So the element template actually defines what are the operations which are possible as part of this connector or what are the uh, what are the activities they can do as part of this connector right Got it. so if you are working in a saas commuter uh, saas this is something which is already available so you just wanted to add it to your saas actually if you are using it in a self managed environment you just wanted to add this as part of your modeler and use this particular element template for designing purpose understood and so we also provide a sample BPMs to show exactly how to use this particular or what are the different op options which is available, right? So kind of the templates what we have. Yes, kind of the templates actually. But this is not more of a template, but this is more about like maybe just it's not showing the, yeah, I, I can just show you an example, right? So uh, let me go to this uh, BPM, right? So th this is an example actually. Mm -hmm. Where what we have shown is we have just, used our connector mm -hmm. and we have just configured it for a simple translation use case actually. So what it will do is, I have configured all the things where if I want to run this, let's say I will just go for running this, right? So this will, uh, yeah. so this will, uh, you need to add a variable actually. So where it is called as text, which you want to uh, translate, say I'm just giving it as, how are you? And I just wanted a language. I'm saying that translate it to German. Okay, so so it is that simple actually. What we have developed it. So for the for the technical folks, uh, folks, right? So what I've done is I'm just creating the translation texture. So I'm just saying that translate that particular text what we are giving to this particular language. That is more like a prompt. To what I'm sending it to the Vertex AI Raj. Got it. So for our audience, right? If you are curious why we are doing a translation using an AI, there is a lot of strong uh, reasons, right? Probably you might think, uh, hey, Google has already a strong uh, translation app, translate app. Uh, so why this again? I can use those APIs to translate, right? But but realistically speaking, for an enterprises, if if you want to change your product description, for example, in this case, English to German, uh, probably in US they use all. Uh, uh, like say feet and miles uh, to measuring distances and so on sizes but probably in the Europe they all use metric so your translator needs to be smart enough about the geography and needs to do all these things it needs to be brand aware 
what's the tone you wanted to use. So those use cases can be really handled by uh, AI for uh, translation. So that's 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 why this these kinds of use cases are becoming popular. So that's what I believe Alex is trying to show on this. Yeah, yes, Raj. So as you are saying about the specific use cases for a particular client, right? So those clients will be not using their predefined models. And that right. is why we are actually having an option as part of a connector where they can specify the specific model what they want to use it. So they can just build this particular model as part of the, uh, what is it? they can train this model as part of their Google account and they can just use this model. So I'm just, I'm just going for a generic model which is available. My bad. Just let me. So, so let's let's assume that we have a trained model, which is what we have given here. Yeah. And this is the text. Okay, perfect. Yes. Let me start the process, right? And let me open the operate. So there is this. Uh, the process got executed, and we can see that the text is how are you, and it is for German. And we can see that this is the translated result actually. Nice. So this, is, it is a simple process which they can actually use. So this is one of the business case also what we are showing how to use translation by using one of our connector actually, Raj. Got it. So you have a PIM system which has all your product description. You want to translate into multiple regions or you are expanding into new. I think you can develop a process with AI which can do it for you uh, easily, right? And also it follows your brand specification and the region specific uh, uh, languages. All right, perfect. Uh, again, uh, coming to the other use case, right, Alex? Uh, you were also talking about, uh, uh, I believe, uh, uh, the vision engine from Google, right? Now, as part of my job, right, I meet a lot of customers. I, I, I talk with them, understand what's the problem, what they are facing. So today, there are a lot of damn systems out there, uh, digital management system, uh, asset management systems, uh, which offer AI for automatic metadata extraction from your digital assets. Could be video or an image or whatever it could be, right? Now, the problem with this is, this AI engine is most likely to be a generic one, right? It does not understand uh, uh, what is my brand is all about, right? Uh, it, it cannot identify, hey, this is XYZ project, uh, product from my brand, right? Those data is not available. So which means ultimately it's not going to be really helpful for me. It's all gimmick. Right. So probably where we can fix this problem is if you have a tailored model which you can integrate with your dam system to extract all this metadata, it could be really helpful. Now I believe with Vision you can do that. Yes. Right. So yeah. probably can you show me a use case uh, or the audience this use case how this can be done? Yeah. Sure, Raj. So I have this use case where um, so this is more like the labeling concept, right? Or more like identifying that particular image or labeling that particular image, right? Uh -huh. What are the uh, different attributes of that image? And even uh, we can also do the metadata extraction out of that image actually, okay? So for test, I have this images actually. Okay. These, these are the beautiful images which I got from internet. Just for testing and also to see how complex the images can be actually, sure. okay? So I just take this images actually and uh, for the technical folks, right? So I have just mounted these images as part of our, uh, what is it, the connector, what we are running in the Docker actually. So what I can do is, so as part of this, right, this this is our, so as I said before, right, so we have these different operations uh, where one is for the text prompt, what we saw previously, and this is for the image labeling. Mm -hmm. And also we have this video object tracking, which is more like if you want to track a specific object in a video. So it will say that, say for example, in a video, if there is a person who is walking, so it will track that person and it will give at exact frame rates where that person position is actually. Got it. So meaning something like if you are seeing this uh, stream live, probably you would have see, you are seeing a logo at the top right can, corner in our feed, right? Probably if, if someone is taking this video and putting on another platform, you want to track that and see if there is any copyright information and so on. I think this should be yes. able to help, right? Yeah. 
and also we have this pre-trained model or training a model actually so that is something which we are building so this is my development workspace so that is why we have this particular option right where we can also train a model say you just wanted to go and create a model as part of the vision or the vertex ai in google and what we can do is you can send the data and you can set the attributes for the particular model to be trained from our connector actually the last two are more technical actually to get the particular what is the progress of the particular job what we have submitted for the extraction and also to get the output from a particular uh, what is that uh, a job actually mm -hmm. so those are the things what we have so let me go into this image labeling right so it is easy to configure actually say as a technical person right so what we have the first one is the json right so it is it is more like the authentication google always provides right. authentication by using json and you just wanted to mount the json as part of your uh, key store or the security store and then you can just use it here right so this is something what when i said that kamunda has the option to customize the connector Let's say if, if someone if, if your client wants to use this connector, right? Uh -huh. They can just take this entire connector and they can just configure few attributes like this, right? Say for example, their authentication. Their authentication is to be the same for a particular project. They can just configure it and say the other one is the bucket name actually, from where they are getting the images, right? So those are some things which is more like same across a specific project. So they can just configure this and create a Templated connector on top of our connector actually. Got it. So in that case, right, when a business user comes, they don't want to think about what is my credentials or what is my bucket. Ah, makes they sense. just right. want to work specifically on, okay, this is my file and this is my response, what I want to get it actually. Got it. Yeah. So here I'm just giving the file name. So this is more like I'm just getting it as a variable as part of the input actually. And I'm just saying in which path it needs to store the file as a temporary for it to process it. And what is my response actually? Okay. So, any questions around this, Raj, or you want to understand more? No, I'm good with it. Probably in the meantime, right? Uh, so, anyone has any questions or comment, feel free to put it on your LinkedIn. Uh, our team will get back to you, or probably we can have a last five minutes where we can answer those things live. Yep, perfect. Carry on, Alex. Yeah, got it, Raj. So, I have deployed this uh, VPM as part of my uh, self managed environment, and let me uh, trigger this right so this is for the image demo one uh -huh. which is exactly this actually so this is the image which i'm going to uh, submit for the processing so let me start this instance so as this is more like an uh, process which could take some time it could be like for one or two seconds this this it could take the time for processing and getting the output actually right in the meantime what i can also show is uh, as part of the video object tracking, right? So this actually has the option where you can also specify uh, the path in bucket, right? So this path in bucket, uh, what we are also planning to develop is nothing but they don't want to even upload it as part of this particular process. They don't want to even bring the file as part of this Kamunda ecosystem itself actually, or as part of this particular infrastructure. Let's say that there is a system which is already having the file in the cloud, in the, in the GCP, right? Mm -hmm. So they can just provide the path of the GCP, and if they have the necessary credentials, the file can be picked directly from the GCP itself and it can be processed actually. So in my language, right, what I understand is probably We'll take our use case itself. You have a damn system which has a cloud storage. Yes. All you have to do is tell me all the assets path, right? Uh, bring it to your process in the Kamunda and send it. It can process and give back the metadata and update in your DAM. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So, so that is also something as a use case what we got. And um, one thing about the Kamunda is right. It is all about the community ecosystem actually. And we are also publishing our connector as part of Git. And if someone wants to uh, request for a particular future, they can do it as part of Git actually. And Kamunda also has a very good marketplace where if they want to even request for a connector, let's say a client is actually wants to use a connector, and if they are, they, they can also submit the request. So that if they submit the request, if some some partner wants to take it and build it, they can do it actually. So that options are something which is available as part of the Kamunda marketplace. Nice. Yeah. So uh, this particular uh, has been taken and the process has been completed. So this is the response, right? So as part of this image, you can see that mm -hmm. there is sky, building, temple, tree. So it is a Chinese architecture actually. So it, it also speaks about the image like travel, leisure, it is a public space. 
So these are the information so what you can actually bring it back to your dam. Got and it. even if you want, you can just tag it as part of your metadata as part of the dam raj. Got it. So tomorrow someone search for Chinese temple, this image should this come. This image will come actually. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. I think this was really interesting, right? Uh, thanks, Alex. Thanks for this. Um, so let's go back to where we were. We were talking about connectors and we went deep into this. So what we will do is, right, uh, so probably, uh, um, um, uh, maybe Bharat, you can bring up the screen, uh, uh, the presentation, right? So, so we saw about the connectors. Now, let's summarize everything, right? We, we spoke about a lot of uh, information in between how you can have a jump start or a turbo start, start in Kamunda. Um, so first of all, this is what our recommendations would be, right? So see if you can build your own framework. If you are gonna do a lot of Kamunda projects uh, in, in, in down the road, probably uh, see if you can build your own framework which you can reuse and have all those components, right? Or uh, you can feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we do have an enterprise work uh, management framework in Kamunda, uh, which we can work with you uh, and uh, help you to have an accelerated development. Now, next, uh, we were talking about the connectors. The ecosystem is really great. Uh, we have a good community and a marketplace where you have all the connectors available and look at look for connectors. Uh, don't think that you have to develop everything from scratch. There are a lot of source codes available as part of the community connectors and marketplace. You can put it on your uh, ecosystem and start developing on top of it. Or if you want to customize or tweak it uh, based on the licensing uh, agreement, you can feel free to do so. Last. Can put that up. Perfect. So, uh, so with this right now, we'll stop here and uh, let's uh, talk about what we do in general, right? As Akiron, what is Akiron all about, right? So, uh, Bharat, if you can bring in the presentation. Right. So I'll give a quick overview about what we do and what Akiron is all about. Right. So to put it simply, um, I can say that we take out your hassles away, right, and you make your life easy. This is this is our kind of a motto, I would say. Now, what does it mean for an organization like you, right, or an enterprise like you, right? So imagine you have disconnected systems living in silos right and you want to connect everything together um, so that your life becomes easy everything is at one place we can help you do that right uh, let's say you have problem with uh, managing your service in the cloud or or whatever it could be right we can help you with that so you are struggling uh, to
you need to find out uh, uh, like how you can do that. We provide managed services that can help you out, right? So in a nutshell, we provide 360 degree of services, right? So that's what it is. And if you see our track record, we overall have 12 plus, exp plus years of experience in building business process modeling and case management, and also in digital asset management, right? And we have uh, built applications across media and entertainment, insurance, life sciences, uh, food packaging, and all those things, right? And importantly, we are also uh, working with huge banking customers and insurance uh, companies. And uh, if you want to summarize, we have done implementations for a lot of Fortune 500 companies from the development discovery to migration and so on, application support. So that's that's in a nutshell what we do, right? Now, if we want to talk about uh, uh, our where we operate from, what our customers. So probably this is this this particular screen will paint you what it is, right? So if you see here, uh, all the yellow is where we have a large presence. Right, we are huge in North America and European region, and we have a physical presence in India, headquartered in Hyderabad. Uh, we have a strong uh, set of people uh, out here supporting all our activities. Now, if you want to understand our partners and what we work with, uh, uh, you can go to the next part. So this 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 is what you would be able to uh, uh, have a look at it. Right, so it gives a snapshot or a picture of what we operate and how we work on the technology stack. So, um, so I believe, ah, perfect, right? So, uh, if if you wanna looking for our connectors, you wanted to understand more about it, I would recommend go to these links. It will give a fair idea of what we are doing. And if you wanted to know more about what we are doing in Kamunda, maybe a common solution for a common problem, what we do, how we approach, blog would be a good candidate for that. Probably you can scan these QRs and you would be able to go and look at different materials, what we have available, made it available in the public. Yeah. Adding to that Raj, so uh, we have done a very good work uh, by, what is that, uh, giving you videos about tutorials about how to use our connector and for different use cases as part of our blog and YouTube actually. We have also had a detailed session on how to have our, what is that we do with our media accelerator framework or with our uh, claims management, right? So that is also something which we have created as videos and it is available as part of YouTube branch. Perfect, right. All right, uh, I think we are at the end of the session uh, probably let's let's open up for any questions. Maybe uh, Bharat, you can help us with uh, uh, any questions which the audience has posted on the channel. And and it, it, it's not going to be a problem. You can leave the questions at any moment. Uh, our team would be able to get back to you on LinkedIn, or you can also email us. Uh, should it be a problem? Right, but but if you have something which we can address you in a short notice at this moment, uh, you can go ahead and and uh, post it. All right, so. Uh, We'll keep the comment section open. Uh, probably we will reach out uh, with a reply as soon as possible. Uh, so please uh, do feel free to go and post those things. And uh, if you wanted to catch up with us, uh, you can catch up at, with this email address. And uh, I believe it was a wonderful information for you and it was helpful. Uh, thanks again. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Rash. Perfect. All right. Thank you, everyone. Hey, thanks, guys.